Hi, as you know, I've had a bit of a session working with the X-Plane 11's new uh, pop-out GPS. So I wanted to uh, show you a little trick that I thought of, and I may not be the only one who's thought of it, but I thought I'd share it. Uh, I have a small, G small screen here that's designed for a Raspberry Pi. It has an HDMI connection, as you can see, uh, USB powered. It's uh, 1024 by 800 um, is the uh, native resolution, I think. But uh, what I would do, I'm going to go to my computer here and select, uh, right click and select, uh, uh, here we go, display settings. And you can see the displays there. Now, here's the display, my the laptop display here, and number two is the one that is uh, the uh, little Raspberry Pi display, and I'm going to select Advanced Display Settings, and then I'm going to scroll down here, and you can see it offers me uh, a setting of 1024 by 600. That must be the native resolution. And I can also do a 4.3 resolution, which is 800 by 600. So that's what I've done, selected the 800 by 600, and uh, you can see that when I do that, it blanks out the uh, edges of this uh, uh, monitor. You can see there's uh, the basic uh, edge has uh, uh, trimming on both sides, blacked out. And that's better for the uh, GPS because uh, it is a, about a 4.3 uh, layout. Now my goal was initially, if we put the uh, GPS on there, and I'm going to start X-Plane now, uh, and I will be using the, uh, I, on this computer I don't have a paid version. I've already bought two, two versions of X-Plane 11 and it's still in beta. But uh, this is a, uh, I'm just using the uh, beta version here with a demo uh, for what I'm going to show you here because I didn't spend the money for another copy, a third copy to run on this. And I'm going to say use the demo version and I'm going to say understood and I'm going to say resume the last flight. I had this set up before. I don't know if it'll remember the exact coordinates because I've changed the monitor and reattached it. But we'll see what happens. It may just open it up right in the correct position as we uh, load X-Plane. It looks like it's something is on the screen, so it may very well be right where it was. And if it is, I'll show you how I made that happen. Uh, this is uh, what I'd envision is building a, a, some kind of bezel to fit over the screen and have some hardware knobs and buttons so that I have what appears to be a uh, an operational uh, Garmin G530. Now if you look at the main screen you can see that there's there's something extending onto uh, the screen there and that's the piece of the GPS that has the bezel. Now if I, of course if I t click on the uh, X-Plane uh, once it gets up to speed here once I get uh, get it up to speed, I can bring that to the forefront. It'll cover over the GPS. And I'm not going to be using the GPS screen. So, okay, see, I've clicked on it now. It's covering up. And if I go full screen, uh, full screen mode, it will uh, completely fill the screen. Or I could just use a full screen simulator mode. And uh, we would not see uh, that unless I click on the GPS to bring it to the front. So bear with me here. It's going to take a moment for it to load. Okay, now I have it uh, filling the screen. Okay, now you can see that it, you can't see anything but the simulator on the front here. And uh, so you see the GPS over here on the uh, on the simulator. And, and you can see over here I have a screen that has the GPS only uh, displayed in that area. And it's... Uh, very high resolution. It looks great. The colors maybe not quite as good on my iPhone here as I'm filming it, but you can see that that is the situation. Now, if I come back here, if I click on that screen right here, come back to the main screen, you can see the GPS there is uh, extending out onto the thing. Now, uh, obviously, I can move this around. The trick was uh, to, as we had it laid out, the screen is centered and smaller, this left screen, on the right screen. So uh, normally you couldn't position this, this uh, screen, make it larger and then position it because you have to drag it with the, with the title bar. And if you drag the, uh, the title bar up, 
to the top of this screen down here, it automatically goes full screen. Uh, and I can show you that, how that looks, just by, by pulling this thing down here. I'm going to pull it down here, and uh, I'm going to pull this back onto the screen. And watch what happens as I pull this back up to the top. As I pull it up to the top, see how it filled the screen now. Now I have the bezel there, and I have that. But if I take this and drag it so that it's sticking out on this screen here, now I can grab this top bezel and I can pull it up higher. And you can see now if I'm looking at the other screen, I'm pulling it up on the right screen up higher, still accessible, and I can put that there. And then I can make this screen wider if I want and then slide it over until, slide over until it, at some point it, it, it matches the upper left. Now, it's not quite as easy to do this as you think, so I found another trick, which I'll show you in just a second here. But the, uh, the overall effect is the same. We can have the GPS uh, displayed only the screen, as you saw when we started up. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how another way to do that. And I'm going to close this GPS. Actually, I'm going to leave it open, and I'm going to stop, stop uh, X-Plane and put Quit. So I'm going to go over here and quit. And now I'm going to go to my X-Plane folder for X-Plane 11, which is right here. I'm going to double click that. I'm going to open this folder up. And I'm going to come over here to where it says Output. And I'm going to open that. Then I'm going to come up here to Preferences. And I'm going to double click that. And then I'm going to go down here to Miscellaneous. I'm going to right click. I'm going to open it to edit with Notepad++. If you don't have that, that's a free program. Otherwise, the formatting is very difficult with Notepad to try to figure it out. But as you'll see, if I open it with Notepad++, you can see uh, there's a quite a nice full. There's a, a set of uh, editable uh, preferences. And what we're looking for is down here where it says it says Pilot GP530. Uh, is GP530 is popped out here, okay? Uh, GPS window is visible. And then we need to put the coordinates in. And the way we put those coordinates, we can edit the coordinates right here and put them in. Now, I wrote down some coordinates earlier, and if I have the right one, it'll work. Uh, I think I want this GPS530 here, so I'm going to say... 999 minus 999. My second one. Uh, now this is the up and down. This this next one, the second one here. I put 40. Now, depending on how you have your your uh, screen uh, oriented, because you can line that up and down or whatever, uh, it will matter. 202, and then uh, the last one is the. Uh, 913. Now what that is, is that's the, based on actually this edge of the screen, since it's the number one monitor, is, is zero left and right. So obvious to the left is, is minus. So we need to take that bezel to minus 999, which is beyond the left edge of the second monitor by an amount equal to the width of the bezel. So that's the, that's the plan there. And the same thing with 40, that's going to put the thing above the uh, top of the monitor and then uh, we are actually down slightly but above the top of this left monitor so that there's enough room for the everything from the top of the window down to the top of the window frame. Then the next one 202 again is the uh, right edge of the uh, monitor which means that that the bezel here is sticking out about 202 pixels onto this screen here that, that you saw the overlap before. And then 913 is the bottom. So this is left, top, right, bottom. So those are the coordinates in that order. And it should say, if you closed the program the last time with it out, it'll say GPS 530 window is popped out, GPS window is visible, okay? And that's all we do. We can just come up here and save that. Okay, and then we're going to close that over here. And we're going to close this window. We're going to launch X-Plane again. And we'll see what happens. If all goes well, and I may have messed, the coordinates may be slightly different, but if all goes well,
what's going to happen is when X-Plane launches, it's going to open and position that window onto the screen so that it covers. The, the beauty is once you write these down, if you, okay, it's going to ask me demo version. I'm going to say use demo. I'm going to say understand. I'm going to say resume last flight. And if all goes well, the GPS 530 should be popped out in a separate window and it should be opened in the same location that I had it before. So we'll see. And it's looking good because you can see it's sticking out on the same, about the same amount. Uh, as it was before and you can see that the top is 40 pixels or so down from the top of the window so I got a feeling this is going to work but uh, that's a much easier way than trying to slide that around not that you can't do that especially if you have a very large right screen and you have a small you know 600 then you have a lot of flexibility you can resize and move that around and get it to where you want it but if you if you want to be able to go back there again without having to do that uh, should your preferences be changed, and you can do that by closing down the uh, uh, when close down X plane. Whenever it closes X plane, it's going to save those preferences wherever that window last was positioned. And if it was open when you shut down, it's going to open up when you start up. So uh, that's that's kind of important to. Uh... So as you can see here, beautiful worked just perfectly. We got the GPS oriented there. Now you can see all I can do. I don't know if I build a bezel. On the left and the right, I'm going to have to position any buttons outside the, the actual dimensions of the screen because the screen is not is not that uh, you know I can't it's not it, I want the bezel flush with the screen so I don't want to uh, have to lift it up to make room for the bottom of those switches but in the same thing with the uh, with the knobs are going to have to be beneath but but it should be no problem to build a, a bezel that can can handle this this thing and uh, should look pretty cool when it's all said and done. So anyway, that's what I have. Um, I will uh, uh, leave it to you to try to make that work. As I said, the only negative is that uh, that the the uh, if you click on this window and it comes to the forefront, it's going to be over uh, your your visual. But if you put that tuck that away towards the back of your side side view uh, when you lay out your monitors on your multi monitor setup shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, that's all I have. I think it's a pretty cool way to get a, a GPS to fill the screen and uh, until we can talk laminar and research into making it easier to do this to display only the, uh, the uh, CRT or the LCD part of the screen uh, from uh, displays that are on the uh, different navigation instruments. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, to play little tricks like this to work around it but I think it's a good workaround that'll work. Thanks a lot.